what is up YouTube the topic for today's video would be getting started with PyTorch so this would be like a sample tutorial where you use PyTorch to create a deep learning model on images so uh, just before we move forward uh, I really want to thank uh, all of you who have subscribed to my channel I already already reached around 30 subscribers uh, means a lot to me I will keep on posting a lot of a lot more content in the future so that you, I, uh, you guys are up for a treat I guess uh, but anyways uh, anyone who's new to my channel I would please request to definitely hit the subscribe button uh, I, I am gonna post very similar content in the future uh, which will revolve around like uh, new technologies and uh, uh, tutorials uh, and more, more of tech uh, this tutorial is actually based on one of my medium posts which has been published on towards data science uh, basically it got a lot of traction I, I, I Possibly Google is recommending this article a lot. I still get a lot of views on it. So it seems like uh, there's a quite demand for it. Uh, hence, uh, me making a video version of the same thing so that it's like more engaging and uh, kind of covers a lot more details uh, which are not covered by the article. Moving on to the actual tutorial, uh, let's try to introduce a few basic concepts uh, before we actually jump into writing code and building machine learning model. So a few basic concepts like what is machine learning uh, for any beginner it would be like a very good definitions I curated so I leave them in the link uh, as well so basically uh, from the diagram uh, the machine learning model in, in the simplest form is actually a line uh, and the machine learning model being trained from the data all the points it is basically every row in the data set so what uh, a simplest machine learning model like a linear regressor uh, is doing is uh, giving the values x it kind of is predicting a y it's plotting a line and and uh, once it gets trained on this like this huge data set then it kind of draws a line in simplest form and when you give a value of x as an input to this uh, machine learning, machine learning model it would uh, return a y thus giving us uh, the prediction to the next definition which is what would be a neural net uh, I, I curated a very very good example of how a neural net works in terms of training uh, I will leave a link of this as well uh, from TensorFlow. So basically, uh, neural net would be like a more complex version of the simple machine learning model I showed, which has a, a lot more input variables, a lot more access, uh, a lot more, to, uh, uh, and it, it kind of introduces like intermediate layers where it kind of compiles it together and mixes and matches. And uh, that's how like a uh, neural net is perceived. So multiple input values to multiple layers uh, in the simplest form, I would say. Uh, it gets uh, a lot more complex but I would like to, to keep the detail a bit simpler for everyone to understand and in, in terms of a, a deep learning model a deep learning model is basically uh, a, a lot more layers like here you can see I can add in a lot more layers to uh, uh, help the model understand it better this is kind of like a hyperparameter where you introduce more layers uh, kind of helps um, the model to train in like a lot more dimensions so let me quickly try to run an example where uh, uh, a two type of like a classification of two different sets uh, uh, should be covered by a, a neural network model with multiple layers multiple hinder layers that's how it looks let me try to run it so with, with kind of two layers it's quite easy to uh, navigate it further and try to understand the different classification so here the white line is kind of saying uh, the, the white line but, um, so here the white line is kind of becoming like a model with where it distinguishes between the blue and the uh, and the orange yep all right with the basics concepts introduced let's hop in back to my list let's look at like what is exactly pytorch and what is the google's google collab so i as i explained in my in my article as well pytorch is uh, it's more of like a, a machine learning library built by facebook's ai research lab uh even i as a data engineer haven't explored it as much but i've i've uh, got in my hands dirty in terms of building a few models like a simple ones obviously that's what I'm here to show it to you guys um, uh, in terms of how it looks like it's it's more of a, a Pythonic syntax uh, a Pythonic library very easy to understand and very easy to like work with uh, it's it's more like a numpy on wheels I guess uh, because um, it's more of like a calculations uh, numpy but uh, kind of accelerated with um, uh, with, the, with the GPU processing uh, and that's where uh, a library like PyTorch like like a like a machine learning library, libraries like PyTorch and TensorFlow are good at and that's where we use them to build models but these kind of libraries also kind of come out of the box 
uh, in terms of uh, building something from scratch so you don't have to put in a lot of efforts or like put in a lot of code to train any models like this that's what we are here to do uh, so moving on to the next part which is uh, looking at google colab uh, and actually my tutorial is uh, based on google colab so google colab is nothing but a jupyter notebook hosted uh, inside a google cloud i guess so basically if you go to a google collab.research.google.com uh, you can uh, get an access to like a free collab notebook uh, and it kind of works in sync with one uh, with your drive where all your files get saved and it basically it's like a jupyter notebook but running on cloud uh, already for already like there for you to use uh, very simple very easy so moving forward with our tutorial uh, so this is a, a kind of a notebook i curated uh, with uh, looking at a few other uh, already existing tutorials uh, basically what it does it uses a cipher data set uh, cipher data set is nothing but in part of my tutorial is is like a categorized data set of like 32 by 32 pixels uh, in size so uh, it kind of points out which is an airplane which is an automobile or bird or different classes are kind of included already in the tutorial we, we're going to look at the following steps uh, and i'm going to mainly follow my uh, medium article on that part as a part of the tutorial we're, what we're going to do we're going to import uh, torch uh, which is actually pytorch the library but uh, once you're using google colab uh, that's mostly t being taken care of uh, that's the best of part of using a google colab notebook is uh, all the libraries are already installed uh, you don't have to work a lot to get things started so uh, let me go back to my medium article so that's where uh, i'm going to kind of help you uh, go step by step uh, in there uh, the first step is kind of import the library and get the data set and like fetch the data set so as i explained uh, like pytorch or, or different libraries like tensorflow comes with uh, 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 all the tools for you to get started so if you if you see these statements like torch vision torch vision uh, it already has a data set called cipher 10 uh, very easy to import uh, it kind of is a very quick trick to get you started because in terms of um, how a neural networks is, is kind of taking pixel by pixel so just wanted to show you before we moving forward so what a neural network does is it sees an image specifically for an image it is taking pixel by pixel and it's doing a lot of convolution steps on it and sub, sub sampling and kind of uh, from there, uh, like using a deep, deep network with multiple layers on each pixel applies uh, a function and eventually uh, eventually like uh, converges into like uh, the classification output you kind of define. So moving back, uh, I will uh, now go on the Jupyter Notebook and try out to run some of the code which I've already written. So this is mostly being taken from uh, uh, the official uh, tutorial from PyTorch. I'm going to mention the link and share the link on how a 60 minutes blitz introduction from PyTorch could be very useful to run. Okay, moving on. As I discussed, uh, the first step is to load a library because I'm running it for the first time. It might take a few seconds. Uh, yep, already done. So as in for the importing of the library, that's the first part. And the next step would be to import the images. So this is how I'm doing it. I'm getting a train set. I'm getting a train loader uh, where I kind of use this data to load into the uh, classifier. And at the end, you can see there are classes. It says like plane, car, bird, cat. It pulls out the data for that and train it again. So let me try to pull uh, the images. And this is like now downloading the images and kind of normalizing uh, these images into like different tensors. Uh, and actually, that's the idea because um, the way machine learning work is, works is, is basically uh, not uh, on the images, but uh, inside of the images, there are actual pictures, pixels where these pixels are uh, has a numeric value. And these kind of numeric values are being used uh, inside of training, uh, inside of convolutional neural net to build a prediction model. So moving on, uh, let me try to show a few of these images just for fun to see how these images look like. Um, as I already mentioned, these are like 32 by 32 pixels, not uh, not very clean, but still for for an uh, image classifier from PyTorch uh, would be easily be able to recognize these pixels in terms of uh, numbers and then easily converge these numbers into drawing lines like which I showed. That's how I like I try to understand it. 
and when once it draws lines uh, into the uh, deep neural network it kind of is e eventually able to predict wh which goes where this would be the step where we define the convolutional neural net uh, in in this convolutional neural net it's you can already see like pytorch syntax is a very uh, very easy to use where there is a constructor in the constructor you you define the few the, the layers you are in, interested in defining so here you can see i kind of define the layers of like as two convolutional neural net one pool layer and three linear layers uh, so within that uh, then i kind of define a forward function so once you start training uh, the training would kind of call this forward function and pa pass in the, all the x's the x's would be uh, will be the images the uh, the numeric values <coughs> of the pixels as images basically those would be like more mostly like matrices in with multiple dimensions so each layer has has an x and y plus uh, within uh, each pixel uh, there is an rgb pixel with the rgb pixel being defined as multiple values so this x becomes like a matrix uh, eventually from the images to matrices with numbers that's what we're going to do so let me just keep let, let's uh, park the uh, definition of the neural net here as in for the next step uh, we're going to define uh, the loss function so basically uh, as an overview how loss looks like is lo loss is like a number which is indicating how the model's prediction was so uh, when a machine learning training is kind of started uh, you give uh, initial values of x's and y's like x's being the inputs y is being the prediction so where, when the model train it base trains on the basis of those and um, uh, when the prediction is not right the losses would be higher that's the end goal of a machine learning model would be like to minimize the loss as much as it can and that's the idea and that's why we kind of define a, a, a loss function and play around it to build an eff effective uh, machine learning model so moving on to the next step which is actually the training tra which is training the actual model uh, in the existing data set so in, in this uh, you can already see I'm enumerating over all my inputs, which is like the train loader. I, I define the train loader in, in one of the above cells. Basically here, it's importing the data from the Cypher data set, but this is basically already, uh, all the images are being treated as like matrices uh, with uh, uh, in values of pixels in place. Uh, basically, uh, with the new set of images, there would be a bit more work. Uh, here I'm basic, uh, I'm already using a Cypher data set which is part of the library so it gives me uh, the train set already in the right format. So that's what I'm doing. You can see uh, there's a train loader and from the train loader I've got the inputs and the labels here. So the input being the axis, uh, all the pixel values of all the images, uh, all the single images here, image here because it's kind of enumerating and then uh, using like the optimizer we defined above and uh, and, and the neural net we defined above to pass it through. So net is basically the neural network and we're passing the inputs uh, uh, inside of the neural network. The only point to consider in when you're defining the neural network is kind of uh, uh, achieving the right uh, uh, dimensions of the model because uh, it's passing layer on layer. Uh, possibly in, in, in a future tutorials, I'm gonna introduce uh, these concepts in more detail, but uh, let's now keep it like as fixed because we're using just a, a fixed data set uh, to train the model. Uh, in this spe specifically step, uh, I'm when I run the neural network over the input, I get an output and from the output, I eventually get a loss. And that's what I use to train the mo mo uh, model. Basically the model backtracks this loss, loss over the whole neural network and uh, kind of uh, fine tunes it again. And uh, that's how it's kind of learning itself and drawing the, the, the correct line of, across the data set. So that's the idea. So let me try to run it uh, over uh, a few epochs. So let's wait uh, for this to run. Okay, so after the model is trained, uh, as in for the next step, we're gonna look at how the model is doing. So after two epochs, let's see how our model is uh, working out in terms of classifying the images. So I, I kind of just used like a few of them uh, and just made a, like a small grid out of these images using IM show. And, and and kind of printed um, the output, which is like the label. It kind of look, it kind of looks okay because it's kind of matching. So uh, from what I can see, uh, it is correct. Cat and then two ships and then a plane. It looks all okay. 
all right uh, i'm skipping a few steps here but uh i what i really wanted to show is kind of uh an accuracy which is is like a good measure of a model in terms of how well the model is doing so from what i'm doing here is um from the test set i, I kind of look at the data from the test set i, I get the, the the correct uh predictions because like from the test i already have the predicted values and then the total predictions and just divide them to get an accuracy fairly simple so what i'm doing in pass passing the images again to the neural net and i get the predicted values and from the predicted value i'm just uh, matching if uh, the predictions are equal to the labels already present uh that's what i'm doing and thus i'm just doing a, comp a correct plus plus where, wherever the prediction is correct and then just divide it by total Uh, it might take a few minutes, uh, so let's just wait. Okay, so as in for the accuracy of our network, for the thousand images is like 54, uh, which is uh, pretty low right now, uh, because um, it's been trained only like two epochs, uh, not been extensively trained. Uh, this can be further improved by adding more images, more different type of images. <clears throat> Definitely a lot more epochs would help, uh, and further tuning the hyperparameters such as learning rate uh, should definitely help in uh, figuring things out. So we can definitely say the network has learned something definitely. Uh, there they should be a lot of more ways to improve it. Uh, not gonna go the, in that right now, but let's just see which classes like, which classes like did not perform well. Basically uh, the idea is we see different uh, end labels and see which, which specific classes here are not performing well and then we can pinpoint uh, then we can pinpoint in the right direction because we can say, oh, like uh, like the plane images were, were not trained properly or like some other images, the cat images were not trained properly. So it's a very good way in terms of like getting to know the data more and getting, getting to know and further investigate the, the model more. So I'm like predicting it again, but I'm like like pulling out the spec, like using the same uh, method previously, but just pulling out the um, specific accuracy of individual models. That's what I'm doing. So towards the end, you can see I'm just running out of like on the ten, top ten classes there. So we can see which one is doing bad. The cat is cat and the bird is pretty bad right now, but this can be improved further by looking at the data set by like adding more data set and adding more epochs. Definitely, and this can go in the right direction. Uh, fifty four percent is not uh, a good number to use now, right? Uh, for a production application, I would say, but. Uh, for, for a beginner to get started in terms of training and prediction, I would say uh, it's a good score for now. And um, possibly eventually I'm gonna introduce uh, a more tutorials on more complex models and uh, probably dig deeper into the definitions uh, uh, compared to this one. And nonetheless, I'm not gonna move forward in terms of training this on GPU, but uh, just a quick note uh, here. So basically, uh, Google Colab already provides a, a, a facility for you to run uh, this on GPU easily. Possibly in the future tutorials I might include that, but not covering it here, but uh, anyone can look up for it. Uh, basically anyone who's training uh, a more complex mo model would need a more horsepower, I would say. So doing it on CPU would make sense, but rather do it, doing the uh, training on GPU would be much faster to do. And where um, the Google Colab already provides uh, this kind of features for, for you to use. This would be it on my tutorial where I kind of covered the basic concepts of training a model and I eventually actually implemented a, a PyTorch model using deep learning convolution neural nets, defined a model there and then eventually use a set of data to train it and then do like a, some kind of prediction and then eventually seeing an accuracy uh, score in terms of uh, uh, the usability of model. Definitely leave a like, uh, comment, or definitely subscribe as my channel gro channel is growing. Uh, a lot more content is, is going to be published uh, more frequently. So definitely hit the subscribe button to get uh, the latest uh, YouTube videos from my end. Anyways, thanks a lot. Uh, see you in the next video.